Baylor. 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 College of Medicine and Friends of Baylor. We are delighted and lucky to have the famous, famous Dr. Goss, the head of our transplant program, also heartthrob and midday matinee star. I don't know much no, you didn't know about that? Not much about being Oh, you didn't know about that? Okay. No. Well, so we're very delighted to have you here because transplant is one of the most complicated surgeries. Most of the, it's totally life-saving and one of the most important things we do. And I personally feel we have the best transplant program in the country. They're just between me and you. Yes. I think we do have a great transplant program. Way no question than about Pittsburgh that. and all those other oh, places. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. That's, absolutely. No that's question not a, about That's it. not even a question. <laughs> not even a question. So, <laughs> no. so tell me, uh, there's been a lot of firsts here, a lot of things that you have innovated. Can you just tell us a little bit about some of the things you've done to make our transplant program different and better? Well, I think, I think if you look at transplant programs and we, we talk about Baylor, I think we need to talk about all the organs, heart, lung, liver, kidney. And so I think if you go way back, the first multi-organ multi donor was performed by Baylor physicians at the Methodist Hospital in 1968. And that was the first time in the United States that a donor had more than one organ procured. That also led to the first lung transplant in the state of Texas by Baylor faculty member George Noon, which was at- I didn't know George did that? Yes, he did. It was wow. the same, same day, exact same day. It took the organs wow. out and put them right back in. So that was a very large first for yeah. Baylor uh, when you look at achievements here. Uh, we also then, if you look at, um, if you look at heart transplantation with Michael DeBakey, artificial organs, Denton Cooley doing the first heart transplant um, here. So that you know, begins in the 60s as well. And so that's another very large achievement. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you move forward in heart transplantation, you know, Bud Frazier's artificial hearts and then our Bud Frazier's transplants have been incredibly successful right. and that has led uh, to a large amount of development in heart transplantation throughout the United States and the world. And now, one of the things that's going on is Ken Liao is Ken Liao is doing DCD hearts, which if you go back in the history of heart transplantation, that's how it all started. Well, tell them what a DCD is. You know, so a DCD is donation after cardiac death. So you wait for the heart to stop. Mm -hmm. Since there's, there's brain death where your brain no longer functions, but your heart keeps beating to perfuse the organs. Well, a DCD or donation after cardiac death, you have to wait for the heart to stop. And Ken now is taking those hearts out and putting them on a pump and allowing them to be rehabbed and then using them for transplantation. It's so again, funny you mention that. I have a lot of friends who are brain dead and I'm waiting for their hearts to stop. But that's, <laughs> that's a whole other whole issue. Yes, that's a totally different story, <laughs> that's though. A different story, that's a different yeah. story. Um, I think as far as uh, the other thing that we should point out while we're talking about mm -hmm. thoracic organs is Gabe Lohr led the United, U.S. trial for um, OCS lung preservation, which OCS is a, is a uh, extracorporeal pump where you take the lung out and again, you can resuscitate them. Not only can you resuscitate them to make sure that they function well, but you can also prolong the ischemia time so you can go farther away to get a set of lungs. Well, I remember you'd have to get in a helicopter and fly and get the lungs or heart and it would be basically on ice, right? Yes. And now, now they can perfuse them? Yes. So is that all of the organs or just? We're doing it with all the organs at St. Luke's. Now, not all centers are, but we're doing it with all the organs. Uh, we perfuse hearts, lungs, livers, and kidneys. And are the um, outcomes better, less acute rejection, or is it just they function better when they? Yeah, right now the outcomes are equivalent. equivalent. Um, I think it's going to be hard to, you know, mm -hmm. hard to tell for a little while on but the long But you can term. use more organs, too, yes. farther away. Yeah. Because organs seem, procurement still seems to be like the limiting Right. right. The total number of organs, yes, and then getting to and from outside hospitals for procurement still is right. a still is a major issue. So obviously, um, then that's brought up this uh, the recent you know approaches with xenografts or, or, or other animals. Uh, right. So tell me about what's going on in the in that world. Well, I think xenografts have been around forever. If you yeah, look I at remember. the <laughs> a long time ago, but we weren't doing them. Right. I yeah. mean, you you all went back to the 30s, and yeah. people would sew in goat kidneys and things yeah. into humans. Um, and, uh, you know, even back then, we had a hard right. time with human blood typing and stuff. Right. So it's, it's never really worked. Um, we've had um, a number of different antibodies that we have not naturally against these different animals. Right. So we haven't been able to really ever get beyond very short-term benefit right. or temporary issues. So you can just maybe try to bridge someone to then get an allograft, a, right. human, a human organ. So now we have made some progress in that the first pigs have been genetically engineered to remove what's called the alpha, alpha gal. So it's alpha G-A-L gene. 
And so that then prevents us from having the hyperacute Hyper or acute rejection. acute rejection that occurs right at that moment, right, basically. Because right. you're already sensitized against the antigens right. of that okay. um, animal, so you'll reject that organ immediately. So mm -hmm. we've been able to get beyond that. So now there have been a few organs transplanted. There's been a couple kidneys, there's been a heart, and there's also been a liver here recently. Um, so that these have now been able to survive longer um, and before we end up having mm. other issues that we're still going to have to overcome. Right. But the alpha-gal um, issue seems to have been temporized or so almost that's removed. That's just now. in pigs. Now, <laughs> are there other animal species or in why pig? Is it because we have transgenic pigs or knockout pigs? Yeah, I mean, we can, we can manipulate the pig genetically. I see. Um, and the other thing is, is that from an um, ethical point of view, it's very difficult to um, manipulate a non-primate human yeah, or sure, a primate, sure, non-human primate. So well, there's my sister's friends, though. You could always manipulate them. Just, <laughs> good, yes. We could. <laughs> Janet, that would... <laughs> just watch it. I mean, if your friends are watching, if they slow down, I'm taking their heart. That's right. We could use them. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yes, yeah, so the, it, it is beneficial. We have been able to manipulate them, and also we have ethical. It, it doesn't yeah. have the same ethical it's issues. As a primate or something like exactly, that. Exactly, as a primate would. So, and, and so it, how many organs do you transplant a year? I mean, is it like five, ten, a yeah. hundred? Yeah, so Baylor St. Luke's Medical Center will transplant almost 400 organs this year. That's unbelievable. Um, and then as when you're looking at Baylor College of Medicine, though, we have the largest pediatric transplant program in, in America easily, more than 15% larger than the next closest uh, transplant center. And then we also have the VA Medical Center. Yeah, you had a breakthrough in the VA, right? right. That's a First or second one ever done? Yeah, so we have we transplant hearts, livers, and kidneys at the VA, and we recently have had multi-organ transplants at the VA, which is a, a, a probably it's a first for us and one of the few in the United States that have been done doing multi-organs. That's awesome. At uh, the VA hospital, we also do um, uh, VADs and circ mechanical circulatory support at the VA as well, which makes it one of the few places What's that can do it. So it's a ventricular assist device, VAD, V-A-D, is a way to uh, let the heart heal or, or not use the heart and have a pump to basically pump the blood so that the patient can stay alive. And do you see any future for uh, the mechanical replacement hearts? Do you think we're close there? Yeah, so, you know, we were at Baylor. Michael DeBakey said in the 1960s that heart transplant would be a Will be thing a of thing the of the past very quickly. We haven't gotten there yet, but we still look for artificial organs. And on our faculty, we have Dr. Shaffi, Dr. Shaffi working with Dr. Frazier and Dr. Cohn for the artificial right. heart. We have uh, FDA approval to do three artificial hearts, which will hopefully be done within the next six months at Baylor St. Luke's. Um, Tal Galvan is working with uh, Stanford and Scripps on developing an artificial kidney which will probably give us a glomerular filtration rate or a, a, a measure of filtering uh, byproducts from the blood at about 20 to 25 percent. So not, it's better than which, adrenal disease, better right, than, as good as dialysis. Exactly. Almost. Hopefully it'll yep. get them off dialysis. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to prolong them, their, their period of time off dialysis, so that we don't have to transplant these children so early right. because then they become sensitized, meaning that they, they build antibodies against whatever antigen right. they get from that allograft right. or even blood transfusions or right. whatever. So if we could avoid that, that would be beneficial in multiple ways. So we have people doing this still. That's awesome. Well, I think actually the program is awesome and you, you've done an amazing job of taking it from a very small program to this multi-organ transplant uh, program that we have at Baylor St. Luke's and the VA and TCH. So congratulations on all your work. It's uh, it's exciting, and thank you for taking time to spend with us. Oh today. no, thanks. It's great right. being here. Thank you for having all me. Right. Good, good to see you, man. Thank you. Okay, thanks.